JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook uh, webinar for the week uh, May, the May the 9th until uh, May the 13th. I am Harald Mospissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a relatively light week ahead of us in terms of economic data releases, with the most important ones being the US CPIs for April and the preliminary UK GDP for the first quarter. We will also pay extra attention to the German ZDW survey for May and the summary of opinions from the latest Bank of Japan gathering. However, let's take things from the beginning. Today is a relatively light day in terms of uh, scheduled economic releases. However, that doesn't mean that market participants will stay calm and relaxed. In our view, they will, uh, will, they will stay on, uh, on the edge of uh, their seats in anticipation of what Russian President Vladimir Putin has to say during his speech at uh, Victory Day celebrations. There was already speculation that he might declare war on Ukraine so he can call up uh, reserve troops and the new energy bans from Europe over the weekend may have added uh, to that. Remember that up until now uh, Russia calls uh, the conflict as a special military operation. Now, we believe that uh, something like that could hurt further market sentiment, sending equity indices uh, even lower, as it, as it will intensify fears over a World War III. Even yesterday, chairman of uh, Russia's state, uh, Duma Vyacheslav Volodin, I don't know if I called the name correct, warned uh, US President uh, Joe Biden that the alternative to the sanctions imposed to Russia will be a world war. Now, in case there is no such uh, aggressive uh, rhetoric by Putin today, stocks and other risk-linked assets may experience a relief bounce. However, our uh, broader view is uh, still to the downside and this is based uh, on the high expectations of an aggressive tightening by uh, some major central banks and first and foremost the FOMC. The calendar for the rest of the week remains relatively, relatively light in terms of economic data, but we will get to hear from several central bank officials, including ECB President Christine Lagarde, Bank of England MPC member Michael Sanders, and several uh, key regional Fed presidents, excuse me, uh, several key regional Fed presidents and governors. With, men, with monetary policy on the front page of investors' agendas, it will be interesting to hear what they have to say about the plans of uh, their banks. Now, on Tuesday, the release on which we will place uh, extra emphasis, emphasis, despite not being a major market mover, is uh, the German ZW survey for May. Both the current conditions and economic sentiment indices are forecast to have slid further into the negative territory, intensifying concerns over the performance of the German economy and the euro area as a whole, which could also prompt participants to scale back their bets over a summer rate hike by the ECB. If so, the euro is likely to drift lower, especially against the almighty greenback, with euro dollar perhaps falling below the key support zone of 1047090 and entering, entering territories last seen in January 2017. Now for that dip, the US CPI is coming out on Wednesday, could add extra fuel. Um, 
And both the headline and core CPIs are forecast to have slowed uh, to 8.1 and 6% year over year from 8.5 and 6.5% uh, respectively. At its latest meeting, the FOMC decided to lift interest rates by 50 basis points as was widely anticipated, but Fed Chair Jerome Powell downplayed the chances for a 75 basis points hike uh, at the June gathering, saying that 50 basis points hikes should be on the table for the next couple of uh, meetings. This resulted in a slide in the US dollar, but that was a uh, one-day story with the greenback making a comeback as market participants re-evaluated uh, the situation and brought uh, back to the table their triple hike bets. Future markets are now pricing in uh, an around 75% chance for such a move and an upside surprise in the US CPIs could lift, could, uh, lift that number higher and thereby add further fuel to the dollar's uptrend. Now, in case inflation indeed slows, and uh, even more than expected, the greenback could pull back. Nonetheless, both the CPI rates may stay well above the Fed's objective of 2%, which could keep the rhetoric around the committee's future course of action ultra hoggish. As we already noted, we will get to hear from several Fed officials this week, and thus we may have a clearer picture with regards to their thinking uh, on monetary policy by Friday. As, uh, for, as for the rest of Wednesday's events, during the Asian session, China releases its own inflation numbers with the PPI expected to have slowed to 7.7% year over year from 8.3%, but the CPI rate to inch up to 1.8% from 1.5%. A few hours later, during the European trading, we have Germany's final inflation data with the final numbers expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Now, on Thursday, the spotlight is likely to turn to the first estimate of the UK GDP for the first quarter. Alongside that figure, we get the business, uh, the business investment numbers for the quarter, the industrial and manufacturing production rates for March, as well as the trade balance for the month. Economic activity is forecast to have slowed to 1% from 1.3%, but this would take the year-over-year -year rate up to 9% from 6.6%. There is no forecast for the business investment, and while the industrial production is forecast to have rebounded fractionally, the manufacturing production is expected to have uh, slid again at a somewhat faster pace than in February. Remember that uh, last week the Bank of England hiked by 25 basis points, as was widely anticipated, but warned over recession risks, projecting a contraction for next year. Thus, a 1% growth rate and a higher year-over-year -year one could ease somewhat concerns over a recession in the UK. However, bearing in mind that we are already well into the second quarter and that the bank's projections were for next year, we believe that market participants will remain cautious with regards to the Bank of England's future course of action. Due to high inflation, the bank is likely to continue lifting interest rates, but the recession concerns could slow down the process, which could keep the British pound underselling interest. Now, ahead of uh, the UK data, during the Asian trading, we get the summary of opinions from the latest Bank of Japan gathering. At that gathering, the Bank of Japan kept uh, all its uh, policy settings untouched, noting that it will offer to buy unlimited amounts of 10-year government bonds to defend an implicit 0.25% cap around its uh, zero target every market day. This put at rest rumors that uh, the bank may need to tweak its uh, yield curve control uh, policy uh, due to the continued tests near the cap, um, near the 0.25% cap and the weakness of the yen uh, and it also reaffirmed the strong uh, willingness of policymakers to stay ultra loose at a time when other major other major central banks have flagged aggressive tightening. A strong reminder of that of uh, the ultra uh, loose uh, stance of the Bank of Japan. Uh, in the summary of opinions, could result in another round of selling in the Japanese yen. However, this is conditional upon Russia not adding further uh, fuel to geopolitical tensions by leaving more hints with regards to a World War III. 
something like that may take the yen uh, skyrocketing due to its uh, safe haven status. Now, finally, on Friday, the only release on the agenda worth mentioning, uh, the only releases on the agenda worth mentioning are Eurozone's industrial production for March and the U.S.'s preliminary Uni University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for May. The euro area industrial production is forecast to have slid 1% after improving 0.7% month over month, uh, taking the year over year rate down to minus 0.8% from 2% in uh, February. The University of Michigan index is expected to have slid slightly to 64 from 65.2. We don't expect that index to uh, shake much expectations around the Fed's future course of action. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.